Welcome to the Merrily Ed. My name's Mark Machado. I'm in London and I'm joined by my cousin Dominic Machado, who's in the USA. He's the professor of cricketology. We are minutes, we're recording this minutes after Sri Lanka lost. That third T20 game in the most ridiculous of fashions. We'll get into all of that. We'll also have a little chat as well at some point about the Women's Asia Cup. Obviously, we both watched it, but we haven't been on the channel since um, that happened. So we'll give you our, our thoughts on that. Um, and we'll also answer some of your questions that have come in on uh, via Twitter as well. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow. You can watch this show now on Facebook. So do follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, and uh, follow us on YouTube as well. We love all the love, we love all the comments, we love all the likes. Uh, keep sharing, keep spreading the word. We are also, I am hastily arranging various meetups in and around test venues uh, when Sri Lanka, when the, the Red Bull team. Uh, come start their series against England in a, in a few weeks time um, and hopefully I'll get to meet a few of you um, guys and girls at those I'd love to um, have a drink with you or, or maybe have a mutton roll or whatever <laughs> snack that you guys have brought to the to the grounds I'll definitely share it with you um, Dom let's talk about this match I mean I'm just going to put this out there I just can't see I just every time you think that's got to be the floor. That's got to be the floor. That's got to be as bad as it gets. How can it get much worse? They are chasing. It's it's what 115 for two after 15.2 overs. They've just got to get 20, uh, 32 more runs or something to 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 win the game. Yeah, 20, 23 more runs to 23 win. 23 more runs to win the game, and then there's a total collapse. We somehow managed to get it to a super over. I mean, India are doing everything they can to help us win this game. Sky is by on the last over. Rinku Singh's by on the penultimate over. Can you just explain to me what just happened? And also, how a team gets bowled out for two in a super over? I wish I had a good explanation of what just happened, right? We're sitting there comfortable. We bowl out, uh, or we didn't bowl out, but we India ends up at 137 we're thinking okay we can just kind of knock it around and take our time and they seem to do that quite successfully nisanka and and mendes take us fairly um cautiously through the first 10 overs kusal Pereira comes in and adds a little bit of oomph to the inning and then you know uh, mendes gets out um you know in the 16th over they've got 28 left to chase i think they've got 28 balls left so just to run a ball should be able to knock it around and get there. But all of a sudden, I think two, three, three people got out to reverse sweeps, um, hit in the air. And we moved around our batting order. Uh, Hasaranga came in at four. Uh, Charith came in at five. Ramesh Mendes came in at six. Kamindu came in at seven. Chamindu came in at eight. And it was like we were just fooling, mucking about, um, giving chances to bowlers like, um, you know, like Sky, like Rinku, who hadn't bowled in the game. Sky has taken, I think, six wickets in his entire career, and we give him two and two um, almost to hand the match to them. In fact, I was surprised we even got to the super over at that point. Um, once Kamindu got out, it was just a pathetic display of batting. Um, it seemed like no one was in control no one was saying okay all right let's take a minute and steady the ship we lost a wicket i'm going to play sensibly even kusal Pereira, who was sitting there um you know i think on 46 or something like that batting really well he got out playing um a shot he absolutely did not need to you don't need to put the ball in the air at that point just tuck it into the leg side and run for ones and twos right um absolutely no need to take those risks i'm not sure what they're thinking um, this is a team that is desperately, desperately, desperately in need of a head coach with a vision for what they're going to be in the future. Uh, uh, someone who is going to instill confidence in this team to help them go forward because um, the way they collapse from such a winnable, not a winnable position, a position from which you should pretty much never lose, right? We're not talking about, oh yeah, they should have won that game, you know, eight times out of 10, seven times out of 10. This is a game you win 99 times out of 100. 
right? Yeah, I'd say even I'd say even more than that. I'd say nine hundred ninety nine times out of a thousand, right? Yeah, they managed yeah. to be that one thousand time. Exactly, um, and 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 it's just it, it's sad. It's disappointing. Um, and thankfully, we all have our our women's Asia Cup win to kind of look back to and and think fondly about. And and you know it, it, this this series loss this th- and the way they've lost today, when you know we're just about reemerging from our kind of hangovers after the the women's Asia Cup win, and we're kind of watching this and we're like, come on guys, let's do something here. And it kind of feels like you know that that on Sunday when you watch the women's team, they had that that kind of shrunken spirit, that fighting spirit, which is what attracted us to the team, which is why we love this team, right? Which is why you know. In the in the nineties and into the noughties and into you know not that long ago ten years ago we were winning the men were winning World Cups and you just don't see any of those smarts that the women displayed or that the previous men's sides have displayed on display today. Um, you just feel that you know that that kind of famous cricket, cricket cliche one brings two two brings three yeah. has never been more like real when you when Sri Lanka are batting it's like one brings eight basically yeah, yeah. um they they've and, slid for i think they've lost seven wickets for under 35 runs in the last three games consecutively right like not we're not talking about um you know, once in a while something happens. This is three consecutive games. The most important thing for today's game, when if you were coming into bat after, let's let's give Hassan the benefit of the doubt, right? And actually, I'm not sure if he really deserves it, but let's give him the benefit of the doubt. So you come into bat and it's three four hundred and seventy seven. It's sixteen point three overs. You've just got to get twenty one more runs to yeah. win this game. You've got enough time to 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 take a few balls, play yourself in, and then score at kind of just over like seven or eight runs a ball so uh, and over and still win it quite comfortably and quite easily. Yeah. Also, you could also see India boning out their best bowlers at that point as well. You know that there's going to be at least two overs here that aren't going to be this tricky kind of spin for you to get away. So, like, the heads are just gone. I just, like... I I think just everything needs... They just need to rethink everything, right? I think the problem is, is when a team is... When... When, it, when they come in with playing a slightly undercooked team, so it would be a Netherlands or it would be uh, a, a Zimbabwe or, you know, a team that doesn't have the resources that Sri Lanka do then we can kind of bully them and we've got enough smart players that we can get a, we can win quite convincingly. And that makes us, the fans, think we could do much. We're not doing as well as we can against better opposition. But actually, it's been ages now since we've gone toe-to-toe with good op- good quality opposition from, from co- uh, cricketing countries that have the same kind of resources we do in T20 cricket or, or, or even ODI cricket, right? So... There is something seriously wrong and seriously going wrong with, with the mentality of, of a whole bunch of these players. I imagine there'll be two or three players now who, after this debacle, don't get picked for a while because that's what happens. They'll right. kind of reinvent themselves and they'll come back and there'll be another bunch of players come in. That uncertainty that is in this squad will just kind of keep filtering through and keep rebounding around and ricocheting around. I'm not sure any... like. I just don't know how you fix it. Eventually, at some point, the openers will go out of form, and then we'll we'll start getting skittled out for under hundred again. Right, um, right, right, right. You have the. I mean, and that's the thing, right? We had openers, a top three that was in good nick, right? Yeah. This entire series gave them good starts, and they just, you know, in the first two games, I was willing to say, okay, look, they're trying to build on a platform, score big runs, and yeah, maybe Sri Lankan batters are deficient when it comes to scoring at 11, 12, 13, 14, and over. But what happened today, that's all mentality, right? Um, For me, I don't really really begrudge um, Hasaranga's dismissal that much because clearly they sent him in to say, all right, just smash a few sixes, get this run rate down, and let's just finish it off i mean even as badly as they played they only needed nine off of 12 and yeah. and um because Pereira was still at the wicket which again 
absolutely mystifying, right? Um, why he goes for the shot that he went for. And I, I, think I mean, that, that's been a trademark of his whole white ball career, right? Like, is that he kind of gets in and then you could go through his, his kind of every wicket he's ever had playing T20 cricket and go, he definitely didn't have, I'm sure kind of two, yeah. two out of every three wickets would be like, he didn't need to play that shot. He didn't need to play that shot. Yeah. He didn't need to play that short. I'm a little bit I'm I'm a little bit annoyed by the whole situation. I try I try and stay as positive as I can about about the Shrunken Cricket team because, you know, I think that's what being a fan should be all about. But today, the, the nature of it, the way they've lost, is just so irritating. Yeah. It's so irritating. Um because in, in no aspect of that game could you say the opposition today were better than us. No. Apart from not game management that's like the one thing i mean i i I actually think our best player was probably the the debut right chaminda was great he he bowled really really well um he bowled a nice tight line in the power play that was actually refreshing to see um us not giving away freebies in the power play to uh, indian batters um that worked really well in tandem with dikshana right um it made him even more incisive and i think that was really really good to see there was some good captaincy i think Um, Charth rotated his bowlers well and you know the first 15 overs of the game of the of the batting side we were in charge we were doing what we needed to do to get the win right and and when you can lose a game you've dominated for 35 overs in five overs that speaks volumes about your side and how it operates um I I (sighs) So, so going back to the Hasaranga dismissal, I can understand why we you could kind of just write it off and go, he he was sent in and told to, to kind of smack him out a bit. But also, surely, surely the most important thing is when he's been sent in, you say, win this game. Yeah. Just get scratchy runs. We don't care. Just win this game. A win's yeah. a win. Like, win a win is more important than the style of play for winning or yeah. you scoring runs right now or a couple of boundaries, or whatever whatever you think all that might do to your stats, a win is a win. Like, and you take a win into the ODI series, you take a win into the next time uh, Shavon could play white ball cricket, I can't remember who that is, I don't want to look right now, then, like, oh, just angry. If you're still listening, if you're still uh, watching, remember to hit that subscribe and that follow button. We've got a newsletter as well. At some point, some, someone will muster up enough uh, strength to write something about something. Um, though Estelle has been writing loads about the women's side at the moment that is well worth reading. Um, God, I just... I'm, I can't see how it could get much worse. Like, how does it get worse? I, you know... And, and okay, so it's one thing, right, to acknowledge we aren't as good as India when India is playing their best players, right? That is absolutely fine. And it is absolutely normal for us to realize that we shouldn't be beating India. We can't really beat India unless we bring our absolute a game and they play badly. Okay. It's another thing. What's bad about this is when you snatch victory from the jaws or you snatch defeat from the jaws of victory, when you lack the mental wherewithal to finish a game that you absolutely should finish, right? This is a game that you never should lose. Um, and I think it's going to be, it's going to be really tough for Charith. Um, you know, as I've said on this show before, I'm really doing my best to preach patience with him. And I thought this was not a great tour to start someone off with the captaincy. Um, I think when Indu needs some time, he needs to kind of, um, reinvent himself a little bit, work on his skills, work on his bowling, work on his batting. Um, that dominant all-rounder we saw last year um, hasn't really been anywhere to be found this year. Um, someone like Dawson Shanika looks like this may well be his last um, T20 match in Sri Lankan colors for the foreseeable future. Or, that, or sorry, the second T, uh, T20i was um, the yeah. last... Um, short format match for the foreseeable future. So I think you just have to commit to a core of players that you believe has the capability of performing at the level you want them to perform and just back them and find a coach, a captain, uh, 
sort of a support system that is going to give them the skill sets, help them develop the skill sets and the confidence they need to thrive. Right. I just, yeah. But I mean, it's so, it's so remarkable to go from watching the top three bat to watching everybody else bat. They're so low on confidence, right? It, Potham has been playing with confidence. Kusal has been playing with confidence. KJP, even despite the rash shot, has been playing with confidence. But when those other guys get in, they're just, you know, they're totally at sea. You should be confident enough that the eight batters below the top three can get 20 runs. They can get 30 runs. They can get 40 runs. Um, also, that... Like this, this mad style that we 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 seem to have adopted, where it's like when you come in, you just try and tee off from the go, yeah. like it's golf or like it's baseball. It's like no team in the history of cricket has ever done that successfully, apart from the West Indies for a brief minute, where the West Indies had about six or seven players who could absolutely hit sixes at will. Like Shrunker do not have those kind of batters. We do not produce those kind of batters. Yeah. We, we we never have. We've had master blasters. We've seen them. You know, there's there's one of the in in the sheds. Uh, marshalling this whole thing but even he'd tell you this that was never the the way to kind of just tee off from the get-go it's take a couple of balls get yourself in like we didn't need at no point in today's game did we ever right. need to do that right that, right that that's that's the difference right in today's game there was no need to do that right yeah. there are some situations that call for it you're trying to get to 213 right in the first game absolutely you've got to tee off from ball one and and i think We've talked about role clarity a lot. I think some of those guys who come in at four, five, six, seven, they're really struggling with how am I supposed to play this situation, right? They're caught between the mentality of we have to play, you know, 21st century cricket and how do I play this situation? And the reason for that, the sort of like when one of the problems are they neither have the skill set to play that 21st century cricket, right? As you said, they're not like West Indies of old who have guys who could just come in and smack it. They're not Marcus Stoinis. They're not Glenn Maxwell, right? And they're, so they're trying to do that. They don't have the skills to do that. And they're not playing the situation. What And, and this is one of the things I was, I've been thinking about since, since the women's match is fearlessness is about taking what you practice and putting it into gameplay without worry that you're going to fail. Yeah. That's what the men lack at the moment. They lack the, they, it's not necessarily that they do lack some skills, right? But right now they're lacking even the most basic skills to take. Right. Um, okay. These are my shots. This is how I want to play. This is my game plan. And it just goes all muddled in the middle. And that's Total. what happens when you have a lack of confidence, when you have a when you're playing with fear. Um should we just leave it there? Because I just don't know what else we can say. I mean we could talk about maybe really, maybe dropping Sidera was a bad idea or, or kind of all, all sorts of different things, right? But really ultimately I think it's the setup. I don't think changing the yeah. the the squad drastically with the eleven is gonna change anything. I don't bringing Angelo back or not, you know, or retiring Dustin isn't going to, I don't think it's going to make a, is it going to win us the next World Cup? We need a natural strategy here. Yes. We need to live live beyond the six inches in front of our face. Um, If we had a sponsor, this is why I mentioned them. We don't, if you'd like to sponsor <laughs> us, you can do. You can find me uh, all over social media. I'm on basically every platform. We're on LinkedIn as well, so we're on the end. Just search for us on LinkedIn. Give us a like. Um, that'd be good to see you there. Um, that's where business is done, I'm told. I've never done any <laughs> real business, so I wouldn't know. Um, should we, uh, Dom, let's talk about the women's game. Where yes, did you watch it? What was it like in your house? Um, I heard that your mum got up especially early to watch it. Tell us everything about your experience of it. Oh, yeah, it was an amazing... Uh, you know, it started at 5.30 in the morning, so um, I got up. I, I set my alarm for 5.30, but I actually ended up getting at 6.30, and I was watching uh, with my son... And we were watching ball by ball, cheering on everything that was going on. It was, um, you know, we're trained to kind of have that sinking feeling when something goes wrong or something goes bad. As Sri Lanka fans, like, oh, no, Chamri gets out. We're like, okay, that's it. That was a good tournament. But the girls just refused to give up. They refused to be burdened by the expectations that 
they were a one woman team. They refused to be burdened by the expectation that India was better than them. They refused to be burdened by the huge roaring crowd. They played fearless cricket. And they launched Sri Lankan cricket into the future, right? Sri Lankan women's cricket into the future. And they played so fearlessly. They played so aggressively. They were so, you know, true to their skills. It was, it was amazing to watch. It was heartwarming to watch. And the other thing, you know, on top of how good they've been, the pure joy that they play the game with is something that is great to see. Again, I'm watching with my six-year-old son and he's smiling like the girls are smiling on the sidelines. He's smiling like the fans are smiling. It is an incredible, amazing team to watch. And it was just such a pleasure to watch. And I was so, so proud of the girls for pulling that off. I am so happy that your six-year-old son got to watch it because um, that would have, I think that's about your age when 96 happened, right? Maybe you were slightly older. Slightly I older, think. yeah. I was eight. Yeah. Eight. yeah. Um, but I just think it's so formative watching your team win big things yeah. and having those big collective moments together when you're that age. And it really kind of, you know, solidifies in your mind what, like, that you need to be support this team, that this is an essential part of, of, of who you are and an essential part of your identity. I also think, you know, you talked about that fearlessness and I, I love seeing it. I mean, it's it's exactly right. It was, you know, Shades of 96, obviously. Yeah. For me, it, that win encompassed everything, what it, what it means to me to be a shrunken, right? Yeah. That standing up to the face of adversity, stand, you know, never back a dad, always believing in yourself, yeah. even though when no one else thinks you can do it, like just always think that you could like something could happen. Yeah. Maybe that leads us to the cul de sacs where we end up scoring getting bowled out in a super over for two runs on a on a bad day. But on a, when the times are good, maybe that's how Asia Cups are are, are won. Right? Yeah. Right. I, yeah. I, I remember it right, Chamri gets out that over, they go for five runs. The very first ball of the next over, Harshita just smacks it for four and follows it up with a six. And I was like, wow, they are not going gently into this. They're not taking it deep. They are taking it to India, right? And that that's just, you know, that, that bravado, that energy is just so uh, infectious and enticing. And to see the girls transcend the tag of being a one-woman team, right? Kavisha Dilhari bringing that all-round spunk to the side, right? Um, seeing Harshita take her batting right she's a beautiful elegant batter and adding those powerful strokes down the ground inventive strokes reverse sweeps right it was just it was like you saw them come into their own right in front of your eyes it was it was just an amazing thing to watch and, and also like we've been talking about on this podcast what for about a year now since that mm-hmm. new zealand series we've been going this isn't quite a one woman side actually these little seedlings are starting to sprout, to produce, up, right? sprout up, right? It was like, uh, you know, when you watch, I don't know if you watch all the Disney Plus Star Wars stuff, I obviously like consume all of it. And you often, there's a scene where there's like one Jedi master training all these little Jedi kids. And it was kind of, uh, you know, it's like Charmory's that Jedi master. So yeah. all these kids are learning how to use their lightsabers. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of a little bit like that. And, you know, the seeds afterwards where you saw Charmory take the um, cuddling her mum with the trophy and, you know, all the other girls, they're all over Instagram celebrating and there's mm. loads of cake being eaten and stuff like that. It's just absolute pure joy, isn't it? And yeah. Yeah. In, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an era when being a fan of the men's team has been, like, a- almost embarrassing, I'm so grateful that these girls have got their act together. Yeah. And start to do something, and now obviously we're all dreaming about what could be, what could be, what could be, what could be uh, when the World Cup starts. At the moment, I still think we should just be grateful this happened. I I was going to say, yeah, my my thought is let's enjoy it, let's enjoy the run. And one of the things that is so enjoyable is it's been done without expectations, right? It's been done without oh the idea of like, well, well, we've got to do this, we've got to win this. Like there's been the joy of just seeing your team succeed and, succeed. you know, sort of like go beyond your expectations. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, should we answer some of the questions that have come in today? We put Let's a tweet out, um, asking for questions. 
Uh, Thelunka are still our team thinks when captain out, every other player will fail. What's the reason to have this kind of attitude? Only captain cannot drag a single team. Um, well, if you're talking about the women's side, I think clearly that's not an attitude that is held um, in the women's team. In the men's side, I'm not sure that still stands anymore because I think, you know, Charith, who was one of our best performers up until about three days ago. Three days ago, yeah. Um, could could just, you know, I, th- I think he's got 14 runs for the whole series, right? So, yeah. um, and well, I suppose maybe after he got out, the kind of, you know, he is the beginning of the collapse, but I think that's more to do with where he bats, opposed, like the position he bats in, opposed to the fact he's captain. But right. I, th- I think it's a difficult question for us to answer. I don't know if you would have, only because we're not in the heads of the players. What do, what do yeah, you think, Dom? Yeah, I, I think it's very hard to know what, they're feeling like I think um, certainly not for the women's team. We've seen everybody put their hands up and show how good and how strong they are um, as players. And I think, you know, it, just to kind of think about the the ODI captaincy, right? They switched it over to Charith, um, and they dropped Kusal Mendes um, as captain, right? There's the new squad that came out. We'll be we'll talk about that when we preview the ODI series. But on the back of a T20 World Cup loss. What do they do? They sack the ODI captain, to, yeah. right? And that tells you a little bit about the structure. It tells you a little bit about what's going on, what's kind of at the heart of the issues there. I think they see the captaincy. I, I guess if I had to imagine the metaphor, it's like changing your shirt, your T-shirt will change your appearance, right? If you're overweight and you, um, you know, don't look good, having putting on a different t-shirt don't make it look cosmetically different right but you're not actually fixing the interior problems you're not fixing your cholesterol your blood pressure any of the things that make you unhealthy right so changing captains is just a quick fix it's a musical chairs thing that has nothing to do with why is this team struggling if the team was just struggling because of the captaincy then that would be a different thing Tom, I don't think it's advisable to start talking about cholesterol on a Shrunk and Cricket podcast. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> like, that's that's not what the people watching want to hear. But anyway, we, we, we've been there now. Mark Williams has written in saying, Charmory Athapatu's elbow injury doesn't appear that serious. Charmory is still playing in the 100 with Marizan Cup and Amanda Jade Wellington at the Oval Invincibles. Uh, Marizan Cup is probably my favourite name to say in the whole of cricket, <laughs> uh, which is part of the reason I read that out. Um, and yeah, so so this elbow injury. I mean, I think Estelle will say that one of the bits she did that she, yeah. they kind of thought maybe Charmy wouldn't be able to bowl, but obviously she bowled. She bowled, yeah, and took in wickets. the final and, I, and took wickets and batted, kind of you know as long as yeah, she, she think, batted deep. I think um, she needs a long rest, basically. I wonder. I wonder how tempted they might be when they get to Ireland to to field a side without her. I think it would make sense too. I don't think it's worth risking it. It depends. It depends on the elbow, right? So, yeah. Uh, Bash has written. Please discuss how Dustin Shiloh is the biggest joke of all time, and Matthews wasn't the problem after all. This Uncle Andrew is better than Shiloh, let alone Prime Angelo. Shiloh is the biggest NPC ever. I don't know what NPC stands for. Non playing character. Non playing character ever. I hope he's played his last game for us. Um, I mean, I I think it's the, the idea that both these players kind of got pitted off against each other is actually kind of a symptom of the issues around the kind of cricket yeah. p- problems that SLC have had, right? Because I suppose in some ways they're quite similar, but actually they're two of our players that could be asked to do quite different roles, yeah. right? Um it kind of feeds into not having any long-term thinking, not knowing which player's going to play which role. Um, I think I've said a few times, I think it was a bit harsh to drop Angelo for this series. Um, I think Dustin's issues are all in his head. I think it's, I wouldn't call him a, a non-player character. We, he, he was, I, th- I thought he was a really good captain. Yeah. He, and we had stability under him as a captain. Yeah. And he played some incredible knocks as captain as well. Mm-hmm. So we all remember that that 50 plus against Australia. Yep. What was that, 2021? Yep. Um, the innings he so, played against India, um, the, the multiple innings he played against India. And, you know, I think 
it's it's a difficult time in terms of long term planning. I mean, I don't think Angelo should be, you know, at thirty seven should be in the plans. I don't think SLC was thinking it's either Dawson or Angelo when it comes down to it. I think they were thinking he's thirty seven years old. I'm not sure what he has to offer. And they thought, okay, let's give Shanika one last run. And they have a replacement, right? Now they have Chamindu Wakramasinga, who um, hopefully will take that number six role and uh, make it his own. Um, also, I think w- we kind of should say with Dustin, I think he was often asked to do things he didn't want, necessarily want to do or didn't believe was was, was right for his skill set. But uh, I think he did it. I remember him bowling death over. He's his, his bowled at basically every single point. And I don't think he would even consider himself really a... a that much of a bowler right yeah um, he, he he's the middle order batter yeah yeah um rosin has written in saying why don't we initiate wlpl next year he's specifically asked let's tell that i don't like to speak for people definitely not estelle varsity devon of all people <laughs> but i'm not sure estelle has the power to to start it by herself I know me and Estelle have done lots of women's content, uh, women's cricket content together, and we've talked extensively about the benefits that WLPL could bring. I kind of suspect that it's in on the horizon from a kind of planning SLC perspective. Yeah, we've talked in the past about how for kind of about eighteen months before the WPL, which is the the women's group, the IPL. The BCCI basically said they weren't sure there was a talent pool wide enough in India to sustain a full right. league. There was a bit of debate about whether or not that's true. I definitely think that was the case for the for Sri Lanka, for the WLPL, maybe kind of 18 months ago, two years ago. If someone had said, could Sri Lanka sustain four women's professional sides? I'd have said, I'm not sure at this point there is enough talent to go into that. Since then, though, actually, SLC have been pretty good. They've put on various different tournaments. They've put on lots of under-19s, women's stuff, and they've got kind of trials for to, to get girls into it, and they're doing lots of work in rural areas to get more girls playing it. So I suspect it will be something that comes along. I don't know if it'll be next year. I wonder if the Asia Cup victory has kind of sped it up a little bit. Uh, their plans for it. Um, I'm not sure what the situation will be with the LPL next year because as far as I'm aware, I think there were certain contracts in place only for five years, which have now come to an end. I don't know whether those will be automatically renewed or whether they'll look for different people or what the situation is with that. I'll try and get clarity on that as as and when I can. Um, I can't tell you when I'll know they anything because it's like a cricket and obviously a humble podcaster like me is right down the bottom of the list of people who ever get to hear anything um Pavan has asked which other sl players uh most likely to get picked by wpl teams based on the asia cup performances apart from charmery don which of these women should franchises be looking at right now i mean i would say all of them but but more seriously right i i think um Kavisha Dilhari is definitely someone who will get a look in. Um, she has she has a warrior's mentality. She never gives up. She's a fighter. She's an all action, all everything player. Um, she's been a gun bowler the last eighteen months. Estelle talked about how good she's been in terms of um, her wicket taking abilities, and we've known for a while that she has the potential to bat and bat with real power. Um, she had the first two sixes, I believe, of her career, um, her international career, her international T20 career in the last match. So she is definitely someone who will be on people's radar. She's a great fielder, incredibly fit. You saw how um, she and Harshita were running uh, between the wickets really, really well. Um, I think the next, probably the next person in line is Anoshi. Really fantastic bowler, can bowl in all phases, a wicket taker, um, someone who is super, super valuable, though she's on the sort of later end of her career. Um, I'll add that Vishmi and Harshita, I think, are close, but they're not quite there yet. Um, you know, I was doing some... Really, do you think that? I, I think both of them are, will be on a lot of radars. I think, I think they're probably... on radars, but I think maybe they're thinking maybe two years down the road. So, you know... Um, 
both um, Harshitha and Vishmi have strike rates that are like in the 90s, right? But this year, they're up to 105, 108, right? I think if they can just push that up maybe 5, 10 points next year, I think they'll be at the top of lists. And um, I think when it comes to batting, they just get overshadowed by Chamari. And I think it's it's harder for, um, you know, sort of these, these sides like the WPL and the WBBL to kind of look look past Chamari and look at other bat- Sri Lankan batters. I think that's just an unfortunate circumstance. But I think in a couple of years, that will no longer be true. They will have matured and developed and grown such that they'll be ready to um, play at the highest level. I'm also interested to say which is the first French translator to really embrace Sri Lankan women, right? Mm. Because, you know, WPL, it's only across, it's a short hop across for, for, for our girls. The, the, the big bash would be the one that I think might do it sooner because I think that's the, the, of the kind of big three women's leagues, that's the league with the least amount of money. And also in almost all the places where the um, big bash teams are based, there's, quite sizable Sri Lankan communities. Yeah, right. Yeah, we saw, we saw Melbourne, the, right? Yeah, we saw it Sydney Thunder that when, when Charmy was there and she was really playing well, the last edition, they really embraced it and it became a big part of their marketing. So I wonder, you definitely think the Melbourne sides, uh, you know, Mel, Melbourne's a huge Sri Lankan city, right? They'll definitely embrace, you, you would think they'd want to kind of tap into that as well. Um, both the Renegades and Stars have, have a long history of having Sri Lankan players in, in, yeah. in their men's side. So maybe it's it's hopefully time to get um, one or two into the into their women's side as well. Um, I mean, I'm interested to see because you would have thought Kavisha would be quite a commodity, right? Because she's she's the all rounder, right? So um, yeah, sh- she's a kind she's of female the... Dilshan, isn't she? Like, yep. um, yeah, amazing, all incredible all player. player, yeah. All everything yeah. player, yeah. Hopefully one day we get to see see her keep wicket. Um, final question, cricket on screen. Is Janeth Liana Gay and Avishka Fernando needed in our middle order because they are full batters only in our eleven, which is too short a line up. Um I kind of think we need to leave this till the next pod where we preview the ODI series. Yeah. Because um as a kind of cliffhanger, if you call it that. Um, it looks like they've kind of torn up the ODI squad. Yeah. Um, I, go, I go with a lot of new things um, yep. and a killer. Um, and a killer. W- w- yeah. uh, so I think we need to figure out why that's happened and how that's happened and who's going to bat where. Yeah. Just, I mean, he wrote this question, I think, before the game had finished, yep. but I, that T20 I, game has kind of scarred me yeah. a little bit. I, so I will 11 say... 11 anchors now. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I will say... We have to remember that the goal is not to... You know, the, the goal is to build a team that will win at the highest level, right? And the reactions will be such that, oh, well, we need, as you said, 11 anchors now. And I think it's got to be, well, look, we have a skill deficit. We've tried all the different options we've had. That we can't just, um, we're not going to be just bringing in players. We're not going to fly in Marcus Stoinis and have him play for our team. We're going to pl- fly in Glenn Maxwell and have him play for our team. We've got to develop the talent that we have to play the T20 game as it is now, right? And that that has to be the number one goal: chopping and changing, changing captains. That's not going to fix anything. But and also we need to reverse engineer it, right? We need to be like, this yeah. is the talent we've got. How do we get them to score mm-hmm. one eighty plus in games? How do how do we keep opposition teams, you know, not scoring two hundred? Because yeah. we know we're a team that when we play against the best opposition, we're going to struggle to to chase down anything massively over two hundred. We're going to struggle to yeah. chase down anything over two ten, two twenty, right? So we've got to feel better. We've got to bowl better. We've got to. Mm-hmm. Oh, Dom, there's so play many smarter. problems. Yeah, yeah we're going to yeah. play smarter. There's so many issues, and, and really, we don't have any solutions. We just have frustration. Yes. yes. Um, Dom, should we leave it there? Let's leave it if, there. If, you, if you're watching uh, on YouTube or on Facebook, drop us a like, drop us a comment. 
Um, drop us a follow if you haven't done so already. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, tell all your friends about us. Leave us five stars. Review us. Leave us comments. And follow us across socials. We love talking to, to anyone who interacts with us. We're just a big old community of Shlunken Cricket fans, and we just want to hear from everyone else. Thanks for being with us. Bye. <laughs>